Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. Uh, this morning we're going to talk about God's mercy and how he is. The scripture tells us that this is one of the attributes of our Father. This is one of the, um, uh, one of his coreness, as the, as you would say, um, that this is who we identify him as. He is merciful. The scripture says the Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all he has made, but comes with a caveat, as they say, about his mercies. And let me explain to you about what the mercy, um, how the scripture, the biblical interpretation of that word mercy, the Hebrew is um, Rahman, is, uh, it shares, it's like um, uh, the, the baby being safe within the womb of the mother. So the interpretation is, is like God's mercy towards humanity. So it's the same kind of divine protection that a baby has in its mother's womb. And with that in mind, we when you look at uh, the scripture and you see that the Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made, he has this um, divine protection of uh, the things that he has made. And that includes you and I and uh, includes all the things that he has made. But the Bible tells us that you and I are a rebellious bunch. And um, in Daniel 9, 9, it says, the Lord our God belong, To the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. So you and I have gone in rebellion against mercy, against all that is good. God still loves us, the scripture tells us, that he loves us and he loves us tremendously because he does love us he has done a few things and the bible tells us that his mercy endures forever and we're going to take a look at some of those things and see what are the benefits of god's mercy towards you and i deuteronomy 4 31 states the lord your god is a merciful god so this is one of his attributes as i said this is who he is he will not abandon uh, you, destroy you, or forget the promises to your ancestors that he swore he would keep. Um, I'm going to read you a bunch of scriptures about this mercy of God so that you'll give an understanding that many of you think that you have um, done so much. You have to qualify for that mercy. But the scripture says in uh, Romans chapter 9, verses 15 through 16, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on human's desire or effect on God's mercy. And so why is he picking and choosing about those who he says, I will have mercy? Because you and I in Daniel 9.9 9, have rebelled against that. We have rebelled against his mercy. And so, uh, but he swore in Deuteronomy that he is a merciful God who he is, and he will not abandon you and I. You and I must make a choice, we must make a decision as to do we want to come back to this mercy. Psalms 103, 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, he is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. So we have this picture of God who is uh, his mercy towards us uh, is the same uh, type that is enclosed within that, that child, within the womb of the mother, that uh, protection, that that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. So the Lord, the Lord is merciful and gracious and he is slow to anger. Um, and the Bible tells us that because of his steadfast love, he says, it never ceases and his mercies endures forever. But it's up to you and I to get it. Let me show you the criteria by which you and I can qualify for the mercies of God. And once we have qualified for the mercies of God, we can then obtain it and get benefits from it. Proverbs 28:13. Whosoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper. He who confess 
and forsake them will obtain mercy. That is your criteria for which you get it. Luke one five zero, Luke one fifty. It says that his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. That includes you and I. Do you fear God? Do you want his mercy to be a part of your life? My question to you is: Do not rebel against him, as it's dictated in Daniel. 9, 9, the Lord our God, uh, to the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness, for he ha- for we have rebelled against him. Proverbs uh, 28, 13, I mentioned to you, if we confess our sins, it says, if we confess and forsake, we must confess and forsake, leave it alone, walk away from it, we will obtain God's mercy. And his mercies is for those who fear him from generation to generation. The Bible tells us over and over, Matthew 5, 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain or receive mercy. This was from Jesus' ministry, from his sermon, that he came out and started preaching. Uh, once he, he stepped out on the mount, and he began to educate us about what the kingdom of God, what our responsibility to the kingdom of God looks like, because we are now citizens in this kingdom and as citizens in the kingdom of God of access to his and that comes with that. We'll see some additional stuff as we continue to talk about this thing because it is powerful stuff. When you have the imagery, I started out with the baby mom's womb. How precious is that? Hebrews 4.16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy. And this mercy that we receive, the Bible tells us that it is new every morning. And it talks as great is his faithfulness. I remember singing that song in church, Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. And it tells us that his mercies are new every morning. So it's not stale stuff. It is good stuff. Second Samuel twenty two twenty six. With the merciful, you show yourself mercy. You want mercy, guys? The Bible tells us that we, how we ought to behave. Jesus, as I mentioned to you, had to preach to us what we should do in uh, Matthew 5, 7. And it tells us that blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And Second Samuel says to us that with the merciful, you show yourself merciful. So if you are not one that is showing mercy to people, don't expect it from God because he says that he will show himself merciful um, as you show yourself merciful. He will show you show himself blameless as you show so yourself blameless to people if you do not of those that are critical constantly. But I keep telling you guys that this relationship that God has given to us, even though it's for whosoever, there are criteria, there there. Um, they are criteria by which we obtain certain things. Our behavior, people, dictates how God behaves towards us. Jesus told the disciples this in Mark 11 when he says, if you have ought against a brother when you're talk, asking for stuff, he said, drop everything you're doing, go to that brother, ask for forgiveness, because if you judge, God will judge you. And so we see even in Psalms 23, uh, six is that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days. Oh, that's us, all the days, all of our life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we have protection that follows the Christian believer, the sons of God. We have the uh, goodness following us. It tells us that mercy, uh, their their position within our life is to guard our back, as the um, the uh, military would say. We, um, have got your six. And so we see some of the things here that these spirits that are here to guard us that got our six, according to Psalms 23, six, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And uh, we are looking at this thing, this attribute of the Father, man, it's a powerful thing. First Peter 1, 2 to 3, who gave who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, that's you and I, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, 
to be obedient. That is our lot in life, to be obedient to Jesus and sprinkled with his blood. What a beautiful relationship to be obedient to Jesus Christ as he was obedient to God the Father. Because we know this, because when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's sitting there, he's, he's, he's sweating blood because his will and the Father's will didn't want to go and go through with this. And the end of it, he says, not thy will. He says, okay, Father, I surrender. And he said, not my will, thy will be done. He was obedient to death. And you and I, the scripture says, our lot is to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. And we've talked about that grace. And I haven't talked to you guys yet about the peace of God, which passes all understanding. I'm going to do a study on that one day and let you guys introduce you to what that means. But you guys have known what grace means, that divine influence at the, upon the heart for us. When God divinely influenced our hearts to become his children of God, and he divinely influenced our hearts daily to get revelation about who he is and what he is doing, he divinely influences people's heart on our benefit to get us all the things that we need so we can have our desired outcome. I'm continuing reading uh, for Peter. It says, Praise to the God of our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus from the dead. So that is because of God's mercy. He put this whole thing together, Ephesians 2, 4 to 5. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, I love that phrase, he is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgress, transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. One of my favorite scriptures, as I told you guys before, Psalm 66, uh, 20, tells us some additional things. It said, Blessed be God, I therefore praise God, who has not turned aside my prayers. Thank you, Father, for not doing that, not turning aside my prayers. And who has not withheld his mercy from me. And the Bible tells us that we have access to this mercy to do certain things. And uh, let me go back to one of the scriptures and show you that what we get from this thing in Hebrews. Um, so Hebrews chapter 4, 6, I've mentioned this a lot of times. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. How can we draw near with confidence? Because the scripture tells us that Jesus Christ is of our is our high priest and he is there on our behalf for the throne of grace. And it tells us that, that why are we coming there at the throne of grace? This is where the Bible tells us that we may receive mercy, that we may receive mercy and what? And find grace to help in time of need. So we have this ability within the time of need to have access to this grace of God and we have access to God's mercy, to this care, this protection, this imagery, if you will, of a baby in a mother's womb, that we have access to that type of relationship when we come before God, that he is mindful of us and that he delivers us out of all of our, our troubles, the scripture says, Lamentations 3.22, the fearful love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy it never comes to an end. It is never ceases in Lamentation 3.2. And it tells us in Second Corinthians 1, 3, blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Be merciful even as your father is merciful that is our assignment the bible tells us that we ought to behave like he is and it tells us in the scripture our, our jesus christ as i told you on his ministry when he walked in he started and he said guys he said blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy and samuel twenty two twenty six, with the merciful you show yourself merciful why? Because they have a revelation of it. They know what it looks like. And so those that are merciful when God shows up, they know what it looks like. 
So when they see that he does things, they know to identify and say, this is God because he is merciful towards me. With the blameless, and you show yourself blameless. Why? Because they know what it looks like. When they go and they look somebody in the face and love them regardless because Jesus said, love your enemies. They know what it looks like when God is doing that in their life. And be merciful even as your Father is merciful. That is our assignment, guys. The Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. It also says that we are the just and the just shall live by faith. And I love God and my hope is that you love Him too, that you can continue your relationship with Him and become overcomers. For He did say that we have overcome the world.